Hallelujah. Everybody whisper a prayer, say Jesus or something, so I can get focused again. Say Jesus. Psalm chapter 124. I'll be brief because we've got a baptismal. Baptism. This is not the deepest theological, eschatological, hermeneutical sermon. It's just a thought I've got. Amen. Psalm chapter 124, verses 1 and 2. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now my, may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. Drop down to verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. Everybody say that. The snare is broken. And we are escaped. I just want to read that again. It sounds so good. The snare is broken. And we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Look at your neighbor say it again. So he's going to talk about the snare is broken. Oh, y'all are so quiet today. Y'all going to make it hard on me, aren't you? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that the snare is broken. I thank you had it not been for you, God, no telling where we would be. But you showed up in all your glory in our lives, God. So I give you praise. I ask you, Holy Ghost, I give you an invitation. Come on in this room right now. Anoint these words. Anoint my lips. And let this thing go forth like a two-edged sword. And cut the snare off some people's lives today before we go out of here. And everybody that believes that said amen. amen. Let me go ahead and give you a fact. It's maybe not the happiest fact that you've ever heard. But let me tell you this. The devil is focused on trapping you in a snare. He's an expert at trapping people in a snare. Let me read you a couple of scriptures. First Timothy chapter um, First Timothy chapter two. Let me read you this. It's in my Bible. First Timothy chapter two. Look why First Timothy chapter two and verse um, verse. Um, I'm sorry. First Timothy chapter three and verse. Chapter 3 and verse where I want to be. You can tell I was up last night with a baby. The devil is a liar. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 26. That's where I want to be. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 26 says, That they may recover themselves... Out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. That you could recover yourselves out of the snare of the devil. Let me say it again. The devil is in the business of placing snares in our lives if we don't watch him. Be careful. It don't matter how long you've been saved. How much Bible you can quote. Like a hunter, he watches his prey and he knows your weaknesses. And he will lay a trap in your path when you're least expecting it. That's why the Bible says that we are not to be ignorant of his devices. But if it had not been for the Lord. I said, he's on the job. But if it had not been for the Lord. David said it twice in that, in that psalm. If it had not been the Lord on our side. In another place in Romans chapter 8, Paul said, If God be for us, who can be against us? In Hebrews chapter 13, it says plainly, The Lord is my helper. In Philippians chapter 2, it says, It is God which worketh in you to do His will. Can I tell you something? If it had not been for God on our side, God takes sides. God takes sides in the middle of a battle. God will take sides. God will take sides. I shudder to think what might have happened in some of our lives if God had not taken our side. Sometimes God's on our side working. We don't even realize He's working. I look back over my life. You look back over your life and you say, God, if it had not been for you on my side, where would I have been today? 
I heard a story recently talking about God on your side. It's a pastor I know of him. Know him I've met him before. His name's Pastor Maj Haraj. Some of y'all might know him. He's from India. He was in India trying to get a flight out to come to the States to hold a conference. And uh, he, he gets up to the gate at the airport, has his ticket in hand, and they say, you're not, you're not on this flight. He said, oh, I'm on this flight, and I'm going to get on this plane because i got to be in the States in just a few hours. And, and, and he shows him his ticket, and the lady pulls up the computer, looks all the way down through the roster. She says, your name is not on this flight, and this flight is full, and you ain't getting on this flight. He said, I went irate. Lady, I got to be in America. My name should, I got a ticket. Your computer's wrong. She checked it again and said, your name is not on this flight. You can't get on this plane. It's full. She booked him another flight, which was four hours later. He went up to the commons, got him something to eat. Was sitting there drinking some coffee, watching the TV. And lo and behold, he seen the flight that he was supposed to be on had crashed. Killed everybody on the plane in the Indian Sea. He said, the Holy Ghost told him, he said, go back up to the gate and ask him, was you on that flight? He goes back up to the gate and he don't tell him who he is. He just says, ma'am, I seen flight number whatever, whatever has, has crashed in the sea. And I just want to know, was there a pastor, Maud Haraj, on that plane? She cut on the computer, pulled it up, scanned down through the names, said, yes, sir. He was on the list of names to get on that plane. Let me tell you something. Hi! If it had not been for the Lord on your side, how many times would something have happened to you? Like, How many times did God keep you from an accident? How many times did God keep you from getting busted and going to go jail when you was out in that mess? If it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord when you was going through your mess, you would have got messed up. If it had not been for the Lord when you lost your job, didn't have any money coming in, you didn't know how you was going to pay the power bill, but somehow the Lord made it happen. If it had not been for the Lord when some of you, your mama died and you thought your world come to an end, but somehow the sweet Holy Ghost come and took care of you. If it had not been for the Lord when you was dealing with that addiction that you had on your life. If it had not been for the Lord when you was all alone and nobody cared anything about you if it hadn't been for God showing up when your baby was sick and you didn't know how you was going to get that baby well but the healing hand of Jesus touched your baby if it had not been for the Lord when that snare got in your marriage and you messed up and the devil was trying to tear your family apart but the hand of God kept your family if it had not been for the Lord if the Lord ever done anything for you give him a praise right now. Hey, thank you, Lord. Da- hey, y'all sit down. I got to- David said, I will look toward the hills from which cometh my help. He said, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my strong tower. He's my heart fixer. He's my rock and my refuge. He's my high tower. He's a very present help in a time of need. He brought me out of the miry clay and he set my feet on a rock and he's my light in the darkness. If it had not been for the Lord, David said in Psalms 31, pull me out of the net they've laid for thou art my strength. Look at somebody again and say, he broke the snare off of me. Hallelujah. When I look back. When I look back on life. All the trouble. All them tough times. I realize if it had not been for God. Oftentimes life is upside down. And we're wondering, how in the world am I going to get out of this? And it looks like we never will step into our destiny. But if it had not been for the Lord. He said the snare is broken. Real quick, I want to show you there's two kind of snares in this psalm right here that we need to, uh, we need to be careful of. Can I talk to you about snares for a minute? Listen. Thank you, Leroy. There's two kinds of snares. There's the, there's the snares. There's the, there's a snare of unawares. And there's a snare of the guilty. There's a snare of unawares. 
and there's the snare of the guilty. Look at this in Psalms 124 again, verse 7. 124, 7, he says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare. That's one Hebrew word. Then he says, the snare is broken. That's another Hebrew word. I want to talk to you about them two words, two different kinds of snare. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare of the fowler. Let me tell you what a fowler was. A fowler was a bird catcher. He made his income by catching birds and and, and selling those birds for pets. He sold birds for sacrifice in the temple. And he sold birds for people to eat. And what he would do was, this is before guns now, so he had to catch them with a net. So he'd spread a net out on the ground. He'd sprinkle some corn on that net. The, the net would be just slightly above the ground, and it was spring-loaded, so when a bird stepped on it, it came up and caught the bird in the net. Once that fowler caught the first bird, he would take that little bird and he would sew his eyes together. Put him in a cage, and now that bird's in pain, and he's captured, and he's crying, and he's crying. Isn't that just like a devil will do to you if he gets you trapped? He'll take your vision from you, get you in pain, and all you can do is cry and moan. And that bird's crying, and that bird's moaning, and, 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 and that bird's crying, and that bird's moaning catches the attention of other birds. And more birds come in, and he catches more birds. Imagine that little bird trapped in a net. He's lying helpless on the ground. His heart's throbbing with the terror that he's caught. His wings are beating wildly against the net. And the more he struggles, the more entangled he becomes. The more he struggles, the more battered he gets. He breaks a wing. He's bruised. Now he's bleeding from the fight. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been trapped in sin? You didn't see it coming? It just kind of got you. And you're in the middle of that sin and you're struggling. And you start making God all kind of promises. God, if you'll get me out of this. God, if you'll put my family back together. God, if you'll deliver me from this. Just get me out, God. You struggle. You cry. But you're trapped. But if it had not been for the Lord on our side. He makes a way of escape. That fowler got up the next morning early. He runs down to where he laid his trap, expecting to find a little bird in the, trapped in the trap. He gets up on the net, and he sees that the trap has been tripped, but he don't see a bird in the net. He looks at the net, and the net is torn. And he thinks, how, how could this be? The little bird that tripped the net has gotten away. And that little bird is perched up on a limb. High in a tree, up on the mountain of God. I said, that little bird is perched up high on a tree, hanging on a limb, up on a mountain of God. And that little bird's singing a song. You know what he's singing? He set me free. He set me free. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison on me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see. Glory to God, He set me free. Then He says, now I'm climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God, I'm homeward bound. You little birdie, you was in a net. You was, you, some of y'all got caught in the net of unawares. But he took care of you. How many of you can, how many of you can look back now at things in your life and you can say, there was no way I could have got out of that except God took it. No way except God took it. I knelt down after a decade of addiction. 
by myself and said, God, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. My life is falling apart. If you will take me, here I am. And Barry, when I prayed that, I felt the weight of addiction come up off me. He had broke the net and I had stepped up free. I'm going to tell you, if any man be in Christ, behold, old things are passed away. All things are new. And he's a new creature. Has anybody ever felt what it was like to go free? So there's a snare of unawares that we, we have to be careful for. But then there's a snare of the guilty. Look on, look on, look on down in that verse. Our, our, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. That's one that comes on you and gets you. Then he says, the snare is broken. And we are escaped. That's an interesting word, snare, there. Listen to the pastor here just a minute. When he says the snare is broken, the Hebrew word for that is a noose, a rope with a noose for the neck. Hanging on a gallow. Think about that. A hanging noose. Like some of these stupid people keep taking around these colleges around here. A hanging noose. Hanging on a gallow. Picture that in your mind. You, you were caught. In the, you were guilty. See, when, when they take somebody up to the gallows... Y'all remember in the old cowboy movies, you've all seen it happen. They take them up to the gallows and stand them there and they put the rope around their neck. You're guilty. You're about to pay. But he said to the guilty person, the snare is broken. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. And we're escaped. The snare is broken. We're escaped. I can see in my mind the guilty person standing on the gallow. And just as they release the hatch below him, and he's going to fall through, when his weight hits the rope, the rope breaks. Y'all ain't listening to me. I said he's guilty as sin, and he's all the way up for judgment. And God sees him. And just as his weight hits the rope, the rope breaks and he escapes. They told my family the third time I would be dead before morning. I was on the gallows because I was guilty. I was dying because of my own sin. I had contracted hepatitis C from shooting up drugs when I was a younger guy. And, and I deserved what I was getting. And I couldn't even argue with God for letting it happen. All I could say was, God, just help me. Lord, here I am. I belong to you. But if you can help me. And they came in that night and they told me, said, listen, you will be dead before the sunlight comes up. I was on the gallows and the doctor placed a rope around my neck. <clears throat> and he was telling me that the hatch was going to open before sunlight sunlight came up. Somewhere during that night, the hatch opened, the rope dropped, and you don't tell you what happened. The healing power of God cut the rope off my neck and set me free, set me free from disease. I want to tell you something. When the rope is on your neck, get ready. If you call out to God, the snare is broken. The snare is broken. Some of you need to just point to the snare in your life and say, you're going to break. You're going to get off of me in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all ought to be in jail, but the rope broke. Some of you ought to be in jail, but the judge gave you mercy, the rope broke. Some of you ought to still be addicted, but the Holy Ghost came and the rope broke. Some of you don't even deserve to have kept your wife or kept your husband, but the Holy Ghost came and the rope broke. Now, real quickly, let me, I ain't going to preach long today, but let me show you how to get out of a snare if you get caught in one. If, you, if, you, if you're in the snare unawares, if it come on you and got you, or if you're in a snare that you caused. Let me share this with y'all. It's not easy to get out of a snare. I'm going to tell you a personal story, and then I'm going to tell you how to do it. You know, I spent a year in intensive care in Charleston, right? 
I spent a year in intensive care in Charleston. Well, half that time I was out of my mind. I mean, I just really didn't know nothing. By the time I come to myself, after a year of being in intensive care, Derek, they had me addicted to Oxycontin. Here was your pastor laying in a hospital in intensive care, and I was shoving Oxycontin four times a day in my mouth. They sent me home with a big old bottle of Oxycontin. First, the doctor said, here's the paperwork, fill it out, and I can guarantee you, you'll get your disability, and I'll, keep, I'll make sure you got your... He's, what he told me was, I'll get you a check and keep, get you your dope the rest of your life. And I looked at him and said, Doc, God healed me. I ain't disabled. And, and I, ain't gonna, I, you know, I ain't taking your drugs the rest of my life. So, Lisa, I got home, and that rope was around my neck. It was around my neck, and, and, and I, laid in the, I laid at the house for about a week. I was 143 pounds. I was still so weak. Donna was spoon-feeding me, and, and she was giving me them pills every day, and I laid at the house for about a week. And one day I was laying in the bed, and I looked at that bottle of pills over on the, over on the uh, chest of drawers thing, and I said, no, I can't stay in the ministry and take them things. I said, the rope, you got to break. You got to break. Sometimes you got to look at what's got you bound up and just say, Rope, you going to break. You going to get off of me. You going to get off of me. In the name of Jesus, I'm about to show you. In the name of Jesus, you going to get off of me. Now, in my case, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I said to my wife, baby, take that bottle of pills and throw them away. She said, yeah, you've been on these things for a year. You better not just stop. You better cut them down, cut them in half, and wing off of them. I said, no, either God can deliver me or I won't ever be delivered. Yes. Yes. Norvish, for about eight or ten days, I lay in that bed, and I felt, like I, had, I felt like a cat. I felt like I could jump up and grab the roof and just hang on it. Donna would come, in, come into the room and say, you need anything? I have me- no, I don't need nothing. Just leave me alone. Will, my just seen you. I love you. But you know what? I got that rope off my neck. I got that rope off my neck. And, 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 and I'm going to show you now how you do it. It wasn't that I, it, I didn't get it off my neck with sheer determination. Even though I am one stubborn sucker. I'm here to tell you. I am stubborn. But it wasn't my stubbornness that got it off my neck. Here's what did it. Here's what did it. Here's what did it. Let me show you this. In, 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 Psalms, in Psalms chapter 124 and verse 8 there, look what it says. He says, the snare is broken. The snare is broken. And then in verse 8 it says, our help is in the name of the Lord. He says there, our help is the name of the Lord. And then if you'll, if you'll click over to Psalms 56, we're going to tie these two scriptures together. If you click over to Psalms 56... And look at verse, uh, look at D, D, where I want to be. Verse 9 and 10. 56, 9 and 10. Watch this. Verse 9, when I cry unto thee, my enemies shall turn back. This I know. What, 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 what? For God, God is for me. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, God is for me. Say that out loud. Say, God's for me. Now watch this. Look at verse 10. He just said in Psalms, our help's in the Lord. Verse 10 says, in God will I praise His Word. In the Lord will I praise His Word. Let me tell you what you do when you get a a, a snare in your life. You grab some scriptures and you go to war. If a snare's got in your family and your children are acting like heathen, you grab some scriptures and you go to war and you say, in the name of Jesus. My Bible says that if I believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He will save me and my household. In the name of Jesus, devil, my Bible says that if I will resist you, you got to flee. 
in the name of Jesus, Mr. Devil, you're going to get your hands off my family. In the name of Jesus, I call the anointing in to break the yoke off their lives. In the name of Jesus, Devil, I take the blood and I draw a bloodline around my family. You can't cross the bloodline. You can't touch my family. I'm going to give you praise, God, that you said I'm always more than a conqueror. I'm going to give you praise, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm more than triumphant. I give you praise in the name of Jesus that you started the good work and you're going to finish it. I give you praise that your name is El Shaddai. You're more than enough for this situation. I give you praise that you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. I give you praise that if I ask, I receive. If I seek, I find. If I knock, it's opened unto me. I give you praise that when I got saved, the Holy Ghost came on me. And I give you praise in the name of Jesus that I got baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the power of God works in my life. I give you praise. And the net will break and the rope will let you go. Because the devil can't hold you when you release the name of Jesus on him because his name is above every other name. In heaven and earth and under the earth. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess. And whatever it is you're wrestling with, it's got to bow and confess the Lordship of Jesus. Yeah. About, about two or three years ago, I was preaching a conference up in uh, Tennessee. And I got to talking with a preacher about his testimony. And he said, I was a drug dealer for many years. He said, I come from a good family. He said, I had a praying mama and a praying grandmama. He said, he said my grandmama was a Pentecostal woman. He said, I was dealing drugs. And I think he told me he was in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And he said, two men decided they was going to rob me. And they grabbed me and pulled me back into a back alley. He said, I knew I was about to die. He said, the first guy pulled a gun out of his pocket and stuck it to my head. He said, he put it right up to my temple. He said, I started crying. He said, I started crying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. My grandmama prays. My grandmama's believing I'm getting saved. My grandmama's praying, Jesus, Jesus. He said, it made the guy mad. He said, shut up and pull the trigger. And guess what happened? It jammed. He said the guy threw his gun down, took the gun out of the other guy's hand, stuck it up to his head. He was still hollering, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to live in the name of Jesus. And he pulled the trigger on the second gun, and it jammed. He said the killers were kind of, this guy told me this, his real story. He said they were kind of confused what was going on. They knew they didn't care. He said he broke and run like a rabbit. (laughs) And got away from there. Some of y'all, the devil, put that gun to the temple of your marriage and he had his finger on the trigger. And you got saved. He put that gun on your finances and was going to bankrupt you. And you started tithing and got blessed. He had his hand on the trigger. But God... Had his hand on the gun. I will praise, David said, his word. He's worthy of praise in the morning. You get up in the morning, you ought to say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, hey, he's worthy of praise at high noon. David said this, David said, I will call upon the Lord at noon and he will hear my voice and save me. He's worthy of praise in the midnight hour. If you give him a Paul and Silas praise in the midnight hour, he'll shake a prison and open the prison doors. David said it, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. It's hard, but Steve, I can't get a praise. You don't know my condition. I don't have nothing. How can I praise God? I don't have nothing. Praise Him, you don't have cancer. I don't even have a car, Brother Steve. How can I praise Him? Praise Him while you're standing at the bus stop. 
I don't have a job. Well, praise Him while you're standing in the unemployment line. You can get a... They can't nothing keep you from praising God if you want to praise God. If it had not been for the Lord. If it hadn't been some of y'all today, your life wouldn't be what it is. If it had not been for the doors that the Lord opened up for you. Some of y'all, if it hadn't been for the Lord that caused you to make the right decision instead of the wrong decision, your life would have been messed. If it had not been for His healing power when you were sick, if it had not been for His love in the times that He carries you, if it had not been for the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13 again, I'm in verse 6, he says, The Lord is my help. And I can boldly say, The Lord is my help. And I can boldly say, let me tell you, if I get my foot caught in a net. Don't you ever lose your praise. Don't you ever give up. Don't you ever say, I, I, I guess this is it. The devil won. No, the devil is a lie. God is my help and I can boldly say. All I'm going to say no matter what I'm facing is, God is my help and I will boldly say. Let me tell you what I've been saying lately and you need to get this in your spirit. Because the Bible says we are anointed by the Spirit of God. We've received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we can cast out devils. We can lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. But because greater is He that is in me and in you than He that is in the world. Greater is He in me than diabetes. Greater is He in me than cancer. Greater is He in me than arthritis. Greater is He that's in me than heart trouble, than kidney trouble, than addiction and habits and my, my wrong mind. Greater is He that's in me. I will boldly say, because the Lord is my help, and if it had not been for the Lord, I will boldly say the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me and He will quicken my mortal body and one day my dead bones will step up out of a grave. Jesus gave us authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Christ hath redeemed me from the curse and turned my curse into a blessing. I have kingdom dominion. I am a new creature. I'm blessed and I can't be cursed. I'm delivered from the powers of darkness translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. I boldly, fearlessly, courageously audaciously tell the devil, God has given me authority over you. And I will cast you out of my family every time. Let me say that again. Some of y'all need to get that. You need to look that devil right in the face and say, God has given me authority over you. I will resist you and you will flee and I will cast you off of my family every time you raise your head up. The kingdom of God is in me now. And I boldly tell the devil, you are up under my feet. Christ has dethroned, disarmed, and destroyed your power, devil. He spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. If it had not been for the Lord, where would we be? But can I tell you something? Rome, we serve a faithful God. Old preacher said he don't always come on when you want him. But he shows up right on time. Sometimes I don't understand why we get all the way to the gallow with the rope around our neck and the trap door open before the rope breaks. But there's one thing you can do. You can base your eternity that the snare is broken. Because when Christ hung on the cross 2,000 years ago, Shed His blood. He who knew no sin became sin so we could be the righteousness of God. And when He shouted, it is finished, the snare was broken. Hi, my name is Kristen, a volunteer here at Set Free. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the sermon video. If there's anything we can be in prayer about or do to serve you, please feel free to contact us at 864-269-3620 or at hello at setfree.cc. 
It is because of your generosity that we are able to expand our reach for the kingdom. If you are blessed by Set Free Church and would like to donate to our efforts, please visit setfree.cc forward slash give. We pray you have an amazing week.